So here's my stuff for making plaster. Uh, let's just go through the different things I'm going to need. So there's the plaster and there's another bag. I, um, I had to stop this video for a while because I realised my this bag of pasta only had about 20 or so kilos in it, not quite enough for what I needed. So I had to wait till this other one arrived. Um, so yeah, definitely worth making sure you've got enough plaster to do the job. Um, stool for sitting on, because I'm going to be there for a while. There's my bucket for mixing plaster. It's one of these flexible buckets, so I can, it turns into a kind of pourer. Um, it's not massive, but it's, uh, it's big enough. I've got this pot here is, um, I know it contains, it, it holds a kilo of plaster. So when that's full, then the plaster's fairly compact. It's one kilo's worth, so that's my measuring jug, measuring pot. A little note there saying how much plaster and how much water. Very, very important because you've got to keep track of these things as you're doing it um, and keep count. Uh, glove for mixing. It um, just stops the plaster drying your hands out too much. It's, maybe it's not the nicest stuff in the world to be mixing uh, by hand. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely a proper face mask. Something which will seal up your, your mouth and nose so you can't breathe any dust in, plaster dust. Um, I've got uh, a sieve for sieving the plaster into the big bucket so there's not too many clumps in it and then I've got this extra water here because I'm going to be doing two lots of plaster and I'm not sure I uh, did the right calculation before but I've worked it out again just to double check. Uh, as carpenters always say uh, measure twice and cut once. I've got to do 14, what is it, 14 and a half kilos of plaster to eight and a half litres of water times two. So I need um, I need double that amount in, in total because it's all going to go into that space there. So uh, I've got this extra amount of water here. This, this, that's my eight and a half liters of water for the second um, batch. So I can I don't have to sit around waiting to fill the bucket up. I can just fill it up straight away and get on with mixing the second lot of plaster because they've got to have as small a gap between them as possible in terms of time. So the next thing to do is to fill up my bucket with whatever it is, eight and a half litres of water, and then slowly start adding the plaster, then mixing it. And there's not much else I can do after that except uh, pour it in, and hopefully that will I'll be able to find a way to film that. So what I'm going to be doing when I've got my mask on is taking a kilo at a time of plaster in my pot, putting it into the sieve, sieving it into the water, and then letting it uh, settle into the water. And when it's all settled into the water, I'll then start, I'll put my glove on and start mixing it um, slowly, trying to avoid introducing any air bubbles. In fact, trying to eliminate air bubbles. And the technique that Giuseppe showed me was to sort of throw it onto the side of the, of the container. And then after a while, the air bubbles all seem to disappear. And at that point, it's just about ready. And you can start to feel it um, stiffening. Um, I've got to keep it quite liquid to get into the little nooks and crannies of this shape and um, that's the mistake I made last time I had to it was a bit too stiff and it didn't quite reach the corners so I had to fill them in uh, later on when it was the, the other way up
I can feel it starting to stiffen now and there's fewer air bubbles. This is this stage I don't really know when to stop yet. I feel it still very liquid, but there's definitely a resistance now to my hand before and it's not slopping about so much. You can hear it's not flopping anymore, it's acting more like one thing, so I think we're quite close. As you can see the air bubbles are just, they're really less and less of them. I just don't want to get it too stiff, but I don't want to let it just be so liquid, it's not going to work. It will take so long to set. This is where you need it. A lot more experience than I've got. Yeah, it's definitely starting to... Oh, it's amazing. It feels amazing. But I can feel the resistance now. I've got a feeling just any second now I should be going for it. Still trying to get rid of some of the air bubbles around the edge. I must remember I need more liquid than I had it last time. I'm nearly going to go for it. I'm going to have to whip this glove off and then try and pour it in. I guess it's, it makes sense to wait to let it be too liquid because I can always just let it set longer. What is that point? Where do I stop? At this point is just intuition, my tiny bit of experience. I'm going to go for it. Maybe far too soon, but... So it makes too much. Um, oh, you see, that's, it's already sitting here. Do it quickly, that's the trick. Get it out quickly. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Amazing. Right, it's just reached the top of the wire. I think I should get that nice bit out. Should have kept the glove on. Felt okay, that felt like a good point to do it. It doesn't seem to be seeping out, and it's really a nice level, fairly level bed over the wire. And I think it's gone underneath these posts. We'll find out later on about that. Just forcing it into all the corners. It's still fairly liquid. I think I got it at the right point. Okay, that's that's a good lesson learned. I, I guess I could stop there, but I'm going to do this second batch. Um, there's still a lot, of, a lot of plaster in here. I guess I have to get that out, don't I? To, uh, that won't mix with the new stuff. So. I probably need to wash this out now. Now, talk about the last minute. Yeah, I'm going to clean this out and then do the next batch. Okay, time for the, round, the next batch. I clean that out with just uh, newspaper to start with because it's still quite liquid. Uh, and then some water and newspaper and then put all the newspaper in the bin. Try to avoid putting any plaster down the sink. So I read a website that said you can do this in several batches just score the top layer while it's wet, so I'll just get something to do that with. 
Uh, it's got this paper knife that's trying to work. So I'll just do some scoring it. Still quite liquid. Very, very, uh, very happy to have found the right point. Yeah, that's that one for that. So I've got my new load of water. I definitely needed a new uh, bag of plaster. I'm glad I got that. Because I've almost gone through the other one. Anyway, here we go again. Let's so quickly mix that in. Right, it's getting, it's getting too stiff. Okay, gotta go, gotta go. That was a lot more liquid. Okay, that was a lot more liquid than last time. Still lots in there. Gotta get it out. Let's try and pull it out. Is it still so liquid? There we go. Oh, that was good. The advantage of it being more liquid is it's just not more of a play, um, flat surface. the wood creaking with the weight because I've got what 30 kilos of plaster in there plus 20 of water 18 of water so yeah so that's a big weight that's going to be a heck of a thing to um, turn over actually anyway that's another that's another story right let's um, have a quick look at what we've got I'll just clean my hands a little bit then show you where we are so, what was a mirror is now full of plaster. There it is. Not too bad, quite an even surface. Um, and it's thick, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reached about the, it sort of reached the position where I thought it might, about 13 centimetres. So, so the calculations were about right, but I think I've got too much plaster here. This is a, that's a hefty slab. It's going to take a lot of drying out probably several weeks before it's any use. In fact, in this place, probably several months. It's quite a damp atmosphere. Nevertheless, uh, it's going to be okay. It's going to work. Um, I should probably have used, a, um, yeah, maybe 20, 22 kilos instead of 24, maybe less. 20 kilos should have been enough. Anyway, uh, I can't complain now. It's, I'm so relieved. You can probably tell that it's all fine. Uh, I've got to let this sit now for a couple of days. Um, for it to be solid enough to turn over and then we'll just clean up the top um, see what we're left with clean up the top and um, and then let it dry a bit more a bit more okay so there we are wedging table nearly done and uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's turned over